So actually, when I first uh, was invited, I was trying to real try to think of uh, what what kind of talk I could uh, give out, right? So I went to the website from Never Work in Theory, and uh, I just like I I looked and I highlight, highlighted several different things. It's like something that's real life to both questions and answers, and then a bridge between researchers and practitioners, and uh, look at what questions could be tackled next. So sort of like a focus view. So based on this, I tried to uh, create my presentation and try to at least give you some idea of what we've been working on. So actually, my what I'm what I'm hoping that you can take away from this talk is just a slightly different view of maybe how you think libraries are, and maybe maybe you already know this or maybe you don't, but uh, yeah, just some interesting things that we've been doing with libraries. So. Actually, everybody, I think Pram also mentioned like chat GPT, everything is coming up. So I asked, why don't you know give the definition of libraries through chat GPT, right? So chat GPT, I, I put it in. What do we know about libraries and their dependencies? And it came up with uh, three important things I think that came up. Well, it didn't cover everything. So one of the key concepts is related to version control, uh, security, and also package managers like NPM. So I believe if, if, if my assumptions are correct, I'm talking to maybe developers, so maybe you don't need for me to explain what a library is, but basically what it is, like I'll just say fundamentally, is like when people create projects now, they never use their uh, start from scratch. They try to use an old project or existing code. So this is a kind of code we use. So let me take you back to the early days of uh, code reuse. So there's this term called NCBM. I know you can't read all of this, but uh, basically developers were very wary of uh, adopting other people's code, which is probably what they, currently the developers would think were kind of crazy. But back in those days, around 2006, um, people were a bit worried. I don't trust anyone else's code and I feel a bit uneasy. But then here were arguments for it. You have to trust people and their compilers. You have to trust the class libraries. And also you need to trust the people that make good compilers. So programmers who eventually start writing Python, Perl, uh, PHP, they have to trust the interpreter. So this is what uh, led to, uh, it's, it's all about trust and trusting other people's code. And this all led to like dependencies. And uh, if you know about dependencies, you'll know that uh, even though you can adopt uh, something that's very high level or very abstract, you really don't know what's behind it or the dependency gunk that's down there. So this is an interesting case. And this was during my research uh, as a postdoc is that uh, if you're familiar with the NPM, there was this uh, 11 or 12 lines of code that broke, uh, basically broke the internet. Uh, one of the, uh, the persons, it's called the left pad incident. They removed this small piece of trivial code and it basically was uh, dependent on other libraries. So based on that, uh, it also linked up with securities, vulnerabilities, and uh, what this term now that they call it software ecosystems or package ecosystems. So this is the kind of work that we've been looking at. So, so far in my research, um, so from 2013, when I first graduated to now 2023, 10 years, I think there's been a lot of uh, work that's been both from the industry and also from researchers. So what's helped us a lot is we've got a lot of uh, library data sets, for example, libraries.io, Software Heritage, the GH Archives, and then there's also GH uh, GitHub API. So you can use that to uh, download data sets and uh, do empirical studies to analyze these things. Uh, from the industry point of view, there was a lot of uh, dependency bot, which is a kind of uh, bot assisted uh, fixing your updates. And um, recently there's this log for shell vulnerability, which also sparked the Alpha Omega project um, that uh, people are looking for like the supply chains and how these big ecosystems, like how can we manage these ecosystems? So based on that, um, I'll just do two examples today of some of the research ideas that we are doing. So the first example is uh, how to secure your libraries. So 
I'm not talking about metal detectors in libraries. Uh, this is library ecosystems, right? So here uh, we tried, there was a student. So we had undergrad students and I'll just, I don't know if you can see my screen, but I'll try to bring up a quick demo of this. So the student tried to create a tool that could look at not only the dependencies that the project relies on, but actually the uh, transitive dependencies. So dependencies that go down the chain. And as you can see, they are large, huge. Um, we actually, this is very hard work to get, um, to get uh, as a researcher, it's very hard. We sold it like as a tool, it works, but to actually evaluate how good it is, uh, it's very hard. So we also um, did like a user study with some developers to uh, help us understand these um, vulnerabilities. So here, as part of the tool, you can see that we have different colors that show the different layers. And for example, this one that's orange has like the severity is very high. Uh, if you click on the link, you should be able to find out where the security fix is uh, and uh, what kind of vulnerabilities are there. So what was the motivation of this tool? So I think what we wanted to do is we wanted to provide developers with a more like holistic view of their project and see how many libraries, how much transitivity has been um, has been has occurred within the project. So this this took us. Um, the thing is, after this, uh, there's also Dependa Bot and there's less user interface. So our idea was to use a visualization, but as as you can see, uh, it's kind of uh, very messy. So it's, I think there's still a lot of work that has to be done with it. But some of the key highlights that we found is indeed there is a lot of um, vulnerabilities that connect to each other way down the dependency tree. So that's one of the work that we um, were looking at. So let me go back to my slideshow again. Hopefully everybody's still with me. Um, so as you can see, uh, this is just the snapshot of the Octoverse from last year. So as you can see, GitHub is one of the biggest uh, sources of open source software. And also these uh, open source software use a lot of uh, software libraries. Uh, in their projects. So here is almost 94 million. So that's one idea. The second one we're looking at is something called protest where, so here, this looks like a normal piece of code and there is some vulnerability. It's a CVE, uh, some attack. And in this case, it was the IP location and the IP location is actually Russia. So this is a bit, um, this is not your uh, kind of regular kind of vulnerability attack. So what we found was that, I don't know if uh, last year, there was a lot of protest where, so we're finding that there's also social ideas coming into the code. Uh, one example on your top uh, left side is when one of the uh, NPM developers decided that he was gonna remove his uh, package from the ecosystem and wanted to hold people accountable. Uh, the other one is about the Ukraine uh, war, and they wanted to show their support. So I think uh, we wrote a short paper about this. Uh, we haven't done, like currently we're doing the full analysis on the impact of this, but it looks like uh, people are using, uh, developers are using their influence to uh, try to uh, get their message, political views uh, across. So coming from open source, you can say that it's kind of weaponizing because it's a kind of discrimination against people or groups. So this is kind of interesting things that we are looking at. So I'm just gonna go quick because I have probably the last minute. So what do we know about libraries and their dependencies? I think it's all about trust. And when developers did not trust the libraries and now they're given a lot of trust, maybe too much. And also when we do this kind of uh, analysis, we do, I think there's need to be tools, there's need to be visualizations and kind of feedback from developers, what works, what doesn't work. I think that is currently outstanding in the uh, research field. And I think uh, in my experience, there's like the gap, the gap between open source in industry or researchers in industry in this particular research field is not that far because I think that uh, there's a lot of industry that use a lot of open source. 
And the second point, which is to my second case study, is that libraries are ever expanding. So it, now they're even dealing with social issues. And I think this is because many of the developers now, they move beyond just traditional programmers, but also uh, other, other, other kinds of people that also program too as well. So I wanna end with, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, thank you for your uh, attention. And you can scan me or just ask me questions. I once again, thank organizers. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, the first one is, in your experience or from your research, how much attention do developers actually pay to library vulnerabilities? I get notifications from GitHub, for example, about needing to update packages. And I must admit, I mostly delete the messages yes. and wait until I'm doing something anyway. Yes. Yeah, so according to the data, we've done this analysis and actually people, the role of the responsibility, it, it doesn't really hurt you until there's a business case. So I think that's what the current view is. However, in many cases, if you leave it too late, then your software can be rendered outdated, right? So that's why we want to come up with these interesting visualizations or some kind of motivation. Because I feel that the notification is kind of, uh, it's overused that people also get tired of this. So it becomes more a pain rather than something useful. So we need something smarter. And I think that's where researchers could come together to uh, try to answer that. Okay. And one last quick question before we go to our next speaker. Um, do you think there is a risk of open source communities fracturing along political lines? Because of course, if I create a package that doesn't work in a particular locale or doesn't work for a particular group of people, there's the risk that we're then going to see further fissuring because of package compatibility issues. Yeah, I think there is a lot of work ongoing now, especially with uh, developer diversity. And uh, there's a lot of uh, like other issues that are coming up with software. So I think, in my opinion, I think that it's, it, it's going to become a topic where people have to be more, like when you develop code now, you have to be more um, aware, maybe awareness of uh, what, what, what it could affect and how much responsibility you have towards it, right? So I don't know if I answered your question, but there was like, I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done in this area.